Welcome to the ladies room. Today my guest is David Falkowski, who we all know as the mushroom guy. <laughs> but several years ago he started a company called Open Minded Organics and uh, he has an apothecary in Sag Harbor on the wharf now and he's doing so many interesting things. I don't know if we'll have time to fit it all in but let's give it a go. Thanks for so having me. David, it's so nice to have you, you here. Thank you. It's so funny. I met your mom 10 years ago, <laughs> and she, it was Easter, it was this time of year, and uh, she said, oh, you should have my son on your show. He's the mushroom guy, and it took me 10 years to get you, but, and I'm so happy to have you here. That's all right. In those 10 years, I've accumulated a few more fun things to talk about. Yeah, so. definitely. <laughs> So you're on Butter Lane. Yeah, that's where the farm is. Yeah, and you have a great farm stand. Thank you. With like a zillion different kinds of veg, like what, 20 kinds of peppers and? Yeah, we've, and I mean, we'll have up to 20 different types of heirloom and modern types of tomatoes. You know, we try to have a wide variety of just tasty it, things. It's beautiful. Okay. And you make your own, you have a kitchen and you make your yeah. own. So for several years now. And vegetable um, tarts and things. So we like to eat. And uh, so we like to grow things we like to eat. And uh, we like to make things out of the things that we grow. Uh -huh. And uh, so we're very foodie oriented in a way. So yeah, we do lots of soup stews, pesto sauces. And uh, we've got a little bit of a following with those as well. So you actually sell the soups and stews? And yeah. So we'll make things like uh, bone broth from my father's grass-fed oh, beef. Uh, we sell, we grow a lot of garlic, and the garlic scapes. Uh -huh. uh, we make a lot of garlic scape pesto. Uh, we grow a lot of spinach, actually. The majority of the spinach we grow is sold in the form of our spinach walnut pesto. Not even as fresh Yay. spinach. So, yeah. That is so cool. So um, you opened the apothecary. This Will this year be the third season for it? So for our farm stand, uh, it's been five years now. Mm -hmm. uh, we opened an apothecary in Sag Harbor Village. Right. Uh, in that little wharf Yeah, mall. they call it the promenade. It's uh, uh -huh. right by Big right. Olaf Ice Cream. Olaf's Ice yeah. Cream. It's on the same side, down a bit. Yeah, and uh, we've really been afforded that opportunity uh, because of our most recent work with hemp and cannabis. All right. That's really you sell what CBD, that space is for. CBD oil out of there. Yeah, CBD you... oil and, and all of the other stuff that's in the plant. You know, we'll hear about other novel uh, cannabinoids, CBG, CBN, and uh, you know, really these hemp products. It's also yeah. interesting. But you also have beautiful crystals and Buddhas and lovely oh, yeah. books. I bought a book on water, okay. the guy that... Dr. Masaru Emoto. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love that book. I, now I bless water every time I drink <laughs> That's it. That's the Hato medicine. Bless it, yeah, cheers. Bless you, water. You're nourishing Love and bodies. gratitude. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, uh... Cheers, everyone. Bless your water. <laughs> Makes it very healthy to drink. And so those books are even <clears throat> messages and inspirations I've had in my family and the business through the years. So Dr. Masaru Emoto, the messages of water, you know, uh, the, the principles and the, and the thoughts and the teachings of how words can affect and intention can affect the crystalline structure of water, right? which makes it the majority of our body. And actually, ever since I started growing mushrooms in my backyard, I think we were just doing the math, I think it was about 17 years ago, uh -huh. in the backyard in Sac Harbor, uh, I've written love on every single bag of mushrooms we've ever made. And any project that involves a, a wellhead or even on our hemp extract product, bottles, we'll write love and gratitude on those. Right, love and so, gratitude. Yeah, I, I have a because I realized I got a touch of gout on my foot and I thought it was a bunion. My mother mm. had bunions and I was like, oh my, I guess it's hereditary. And I looked it up and it was just horrible. The, they had a, it, an operation where they shaved the bone. I was like, no, no, no. And so I go to the doctor and, and they look at it and they go, oh, that's gout. And I'm like, gout, how would I have gout? I would never have gout. I don't do anything to get gout. And he's like, no more wine for you. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't even drink much wine. So, but I eat a lot of cheese. So then I um, Googled it, and it turned out I didn't drink enough water. Started drinking water, crystals, yeah. and it went right away. So now I have a Brita in my bathroom, and I have on it love and gratitude mm -hmm. to remind me to uh, send the water love. Yeah. Because um, do you remember the movie What the Bleep Do We Know? Oh, yeah. That was a good one. So Dr. Emoto <clears throat> took those fo photos of the w frozen water, and when you send water love, the crystals are so beautiful and gratitude, they're different, but so beautiful. And friendship, they're different, but so beautiful. 
But then they were like, I hate you. I'm going to kill you. And the crystals were like Rah! red and yellow. And, and the other ones were blue and purple and aqua. So interesting. It's amazing how the universe works. It's amazing how the and it's all set up to work. And humans can't screw it up fast enough. <laughs> but you're one of Doing the people the, making it work for we're, we're, people. We're trying getting, to work with the system. Getting people yeah. healthy out here. We're trying, yeah. So uh, a lot of different kind of mushrooms you grow. O yeah. So oyster. last year uh, we grew blue oyster, yellow oyster, maitake mushrooms, lion's mane mushrooms. Uh, we purveyed and brought in truffles from Italy or cordyceps mushrooms. Wow. Um, the, uh, so it's a hybrid of purveying and, and growing. Uh, the mushrooms we do cultivate are certified organic. Uh -huh. and, and the maitake, is that the one they, they make that's like a cancer cure? So, you know, there's lots of studies uh -huh. uh, on different types of mushrooms and extracts and chemicals found in them. Uh, there are studies that could suggest that maitake or a maitake extract could inhibit the growth of cancerous tumors uh -huh. in a petri dish. You know, so it's really yeah. important, um, you know, to, to know the context of things. Uh, but also the way I look at it is uh, eating uh, maitake mushrooms or taking their extract daily, uh, hopefully you don't work for Doritos, it's definitely a lot better for you than eating a bag of Doritos every yeah. day. You know, it's a, it's yeah, a, yeah. I, I have a friend that swears that he was cured by the, the tincture We've definitely the had uh, you customers make tinctures. come. Yeah, we make extracts and tinctures, uh, these dietary supplements. Um, there, there definitely have been people through the years who have shared their success stories, uh -huh. and uh, it, it really is inspiring. It puts a little uh, support in your in your tired feet and shoulders sometimes. You know, come the end of the season, you know, when you hear how you've helped people with this stuff. What does ashwagandha do? Ashwagandha is an interesting herb, uh, common in uh, Ayurvedic medicine uh, in India, uh, also known as horse's breath. <laughs> it oh. really kind of about smells and tastes like it. Huh. Uh, it's an adaptogenic herb, uh, often uh, referred to as like a, could be tonifying like a type of ginseng or an adaptogenic herb that can kind of just tonify and bolster our systems. Balance, in certain, balance. balance things out. Yeah. Huh, interesting. I, I, many years ago, for some reason, I was researching hemp and I read that the cotton industry lobbied Washington to stop make hemp illegal because it was really cutting into cotton and cotton fabrics and it was hemp was such a better uh, product you can make so many things out of hemp you could so um, hemp was illegal in this country for many years and this time when I was researching it because you were coming on the show it said that Andrew Mellon was against it because of uh, oh what was his problem I wrote it down Oh, he was the one, nylon. It was competing with nylon. And then um, uh, Randolph Hearst was against it because he thought it would compete with making paper. Well, and the most, DuPont most family. Most indubitably would. The, uh, well, the DuPonts made lots of money, blood money, working both sides of wars, gunpowder. Yeah, powder, yeah. You know, yeah, because hemp chemicals. can be used in biofuels. It, and, it can. It's a, uh, it's a very building diverse blocks. crop. Building yeah. blocks. They make building blocks with limestone. It's just... Amazing how many things you can use hemp for. So what are the things you're doing with hemp and how much are you growing? So to be clear, so hemp and marijuana, they're all cannabis. Right. right? Marijuana is just the high THC variety that gets Yay. people intoxicated indica. or stoned. Yeah, indica, sativa as well. And then hemp tends to be uh, these low, low THC varieties. As a matter right. of fact, Can't a get test, high on. well, uh, yeah. So a test to see how much THC is in that is actually what defines hemp in the modern world. Uh -huh. So that being said, once we're at this 0.3% total potential THC realm in hemp, it kind of breaks off to a couple paths. One, yes, are the more traditional industrial uses. Paper, concrete, fiber, oil and food from the seed. Um, and then you have uh, one of the swim lanes where I'm currently operating in like the cannabinoid side. So CBD is one of these cannabinoids, just like THC. Uh, we're starting to hear about CBG, CBN. Um, I've never heard of CBG. What is that? Cannabigerol. So this is another cannabinoid that's found in cannabis. Uh, and as we're researching more, we're discovering how it can work by itself or in the presence of the others in conjunction called the entourage effect. Uh -huh. uh, for various wellness potentials. And so what, what uh, wellness area does it, for sleep or depression? Well, it's really or? interesting. So, you know, the, the, the 
I'll say this, I've been doing this for a few years now and I've worked with thousands of people. Um, many of the things, so I'm not supposed to be making claims, these are anecdotal reports, right. but many of the things we've heard, I've seen. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean uh, every person, for every, every time. Everybody's is different. Have, even, even for myself personally, you know, it's always best to speak from your personal experience. Uh -huh. Uh, even uh, stress and anxiety. I mean, and really, my virtually my whole family will use it for for managing stress or sleep. But sometimes it's just not going to cut it. You know, right. th these aren't silver bullets. They're 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 powerful medicines that can help us mm -hmm. along the way. But you know, if you go to the doctor and you go, Doc, my eye hurts. You got to stop poking your CBD eye. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you got to stop poking your eye yeah. before the doctor can help your eye feel better. Right. Um, but I mean, personally, uh, you know, I mean, I. Broke my half, my hip in half when I was 13 years old. Oh my goodness! By the time I was 16, I had a, a steel rod in and out of there. I've had orthoscopic surgery on my other knee. I've degenerated discs. I'm a business owner, <laughs> and so you know. And you I, work, you work long hours do. and do a lot of stuff. It's Thank amazing. Thank you for how acknowledging much stuff that. You you know, I'm up at you know four or five o'clock oh every morning doing my, my research. I'm just going to sleep then. <laughs> yeah. And it's uh, you know. The, it's really helped in a lot of ways to, in my body, I feel to control inflammation that causes uh -huh. arthritic pain mm -hmm. uh, or joint stiffness. So, so which which oil uh, helps with inflammation? The CBD oil itself, or so so really interesting. Um, and I'm sure as many people know, as they start to look at it, right, they hear about it from somebody, whether it's on the right. internet or their friend, their mother, right. their sister, cousin, neighbor, and you go in there and you're flooded with this stuff. Oh, there's Even so much on Amazon. I would not go near Amazon. Oh. Um, the, uh, and you go into a store and everybody's got their angle. So full disclosure, my approach is really to show people that you really don't need a huge variety of products to get a huge variety of results. Uh -huh. You really just need a, a robust, true full spectrum product basically that represents the whole essence of that mother plant. Uh -huh. And from there you just learn how to use how much and when. Now don't get me wrong, there's subtleties, but and your Very droppers minor. in the bottles have measurements too. Yeah. And so of, of a dropper, like would you take that much to start or half a dropper? How so does that work? In, in the way I've designed our product lineup, um, we have a higher concentration product and it's standardized. So a quarter dropper gives you about 15 milligrams of CBD. Mm -hmm. But here's the important thing, that's just one of the many chemicals that are in there. Some people call them phytocannabinoids or cannabinoids. Um, you may hear of terpenes and flavonoids. These are all the things, again, that make up the mother plant. You know, mm -hmm. we, we want to capture that through extraction. So it's a, the standard would be 15 milligrams of CBD, but in a true full spectrum product, that much CBD will give you a perceived effect of a distillate product or an isolate product. And in many cases, as things are more fractionated or refined, we're right. actually removing active compounds yeah. and you get a different product. Yeah. So it's really important when you want to uh, begin to experience or try these things, go somewhere where you can have a conversation, where somebody can explain at your pace what it is you want to do, how it is this product may work, and why. Um, and mm -hmm. don't be upsold that you have to buy 50 million different products. A, a good hemp extract can be used both topically, orally, for animals humans. Um, I've used it personally. So the same thing, uh, well, again, to speak personal. Um, so for myself, I really enjoy that quarter dropper in the uh -huh. morning when I drink my coffee. Not in it, but right before. And uh -huh. I feel it just kind of helps me keep my head on straight. And in the morning, I get all worked up and I go. My wife will use the same product and the same amount about a half an hour before she goes to bed and helps her go to sleep. Uh -huh. That same quarter dropper, I was at uh, Morton Wildlife Refuge. It's one of my favorite places out here going for a walk uh, late winter and one of those little roots rolled my ankle and it popped and it was the first time in a long time I sprained oh, my ankle. Oh, sprained your ankle. That and, hurts more than a break. And one of the things I immediately did, I'm out in, in the woods, I put some of the oil on the top and I personally feel the perceived anti-inflammatory properties act as, acted as a good first Immediate. aid. Yeah. So we're just beginning to learn how to use these. We're just beginning to scientifically validate things that we talk about anecdotally and making claims. And it's an exciting part, you know, exciting time to be part of this for sure here. Yeah. yeah. And uh, do you guys smoke pot? Do you use it? Do you use the? <laughs> do you use the cannabis part, part the sure. other way? Sure. So the the marijuana products. I mean, I I wouldn't lie and say I've never partaken in my life. Yeah. Um, but uh, THC it, it really slows me down. Uh huh. Um, I uh, 
these full spectrum hemp products, they do have a small amount of THC in there. And I call this the perfect margarita rule. So if I give you a margarita with salt on the rim of the glass, THC, doesn't mean adding more in there is gonna make more salt, it's gonna make it a better recipe. Uh -huh. And the same thing for me. So some people, they can consume larger amounts of THC or they smoke and they have a great time. For me, it really shuts me down or slows me down. Yeah. And, uh, For me, it makes me think more, and I start worrying about stuff. <laughs> but it doesn't make me paranoid because I'm not a paranoid person, but it makes me think too much. And my mind is like going like crazy to yeah. begin with. Um, a lot of my friends say that it really helps them sleep. They take like yeah. two or three puffs, and they're off to sleep. I, I haven't tried that because I'm afraid that if I do, I'll be lying there thinking about all Which you is know, possible. my responsibilities. So, um, but that speaks to there are varietals that are more sedative mm -hmm. and more stimulating, um, and especially we find these differences in cannabis varietals um, when when we're consuming more THC with it, they tend to be more pronounced. Mm -hmm. And there's a half life too, isn't there? When when you're smoking when you're smoking pot every day. Well, we can build up a tolerance. Uh -huh. uh, the same thing happens with these hemp extracts or CBD products. Oh, do you have to fact, take more as you go along? Well, what happens is over time, as suppose, uh, again, to speak about myself, uh, my hip, I mean, I'm arthritic and I have pain from degenerated discs. I find when I take this regularly, just and obviously doing my, my physical therapy and exercises, mm -hmm. I'm trying to keep the weight down, <laughs> the, it helps. But over time, a, a pain might start to creep back in or things might to stiffen. So you could take more, uh -huh. but in reality, your body's getting used to those chemicals. Yeah, you're building so up you a tolerance. So you need to take a tolerance break. And yeah, so. stop it for a while and then yeah, reset of, the clock. A lot of people in college experience this. They get a good bag of pot and they're smoking. Oh, well, this is good stuff. And by the end of the week, it's really not doing anything. Yeah. You put it down for a few days, you come back and you smoke some, and bing, yep. and it rings your bell. Yep, yep, yeah. yep. It's amazing how fast the human organism uh, um, <laughs> resets if like if you uh, have an addiction to sugar if you just stay away from it for three days you don't have the craving anymore interesting but you have to stay away from it for three days and it's like that i think with everything and your body forgets it's on to the next thing it always wants to remain whole so if you're putting coffee in it every day and then one day you don't it's like hey where's my coffee <laughs> but if you can stay away from it for three days it's like oh where's that tea we tell had? my wife that <laughs> uh, i know i'm not really uh, coffee uh, i'm too speedy for coffee sure. but i do love it um uh, well so um the, the apothecary, sure. you, the, the girl, would you, is Ashley going to be working there yeah, again this so year? Yeah, so technically, she's no. She's lovely. My, my wife, Ashley, she owns it, so it's a oh, that's your wife? female owned company. Oh. Um, it's, uh, it's all ladies who work for us there. I uh -huh. just happen to uh, act as an advisory role and, uh -huh. and drop in occasionally you know, to, to help educate people. Uh, it's, a, it's a very unique space. It is. Um, it's and lovely. it's really only because of our work with the cannabis and the hemp stuff that's allowed us to afford to be there. Uh -huh. But you go in there and we have art and work represented from no less than 20 locals. Wow. You know, that's all hanging. We're not an art gallery per se, right. but uh, you go in there, uh, there's several artists hanging on the walls or Julie Lofsted and her hand carved bamboo straws. Mm -hmm. uh, people who make uh, beeswax infused wraps for their food. My friend Meredith, uh, who I went to school with, she catches food uh, like uh, fish and shellfish. She'll print them and then eat it, and so those prints are up there. Uh, my buddy Steve, who's a very fierce and loyal friend, and he's been with Open Minded Organics for a long time now. He's a very talented artist, so he's got like a lot of his nature sketches and medicine wheels he's made with bones and feathers he's collected. Wow, yeah. My mother, Such uh, interesting stuff a retired in RN nurse, uh, and also a trained Reiki master and a graduate of Barbara Brennan back wow. in the 80s, one of the first here on the East yeah. End. Uh, you know, she makes pendulums. Uh -huh. uh, one of the gals, uh, Chelsea, who works with us, she makes earrings and sells them there. Megan, she makes uh, these herbal infused uh, scrubs. So there's a lot of different things. There's uh, a lot in very there. Very connected, though. Yeah. They're personal. And, uh, and it's all local people here. So it's not really just generic, hey, let's price shop this online. It's really somebody's uh, you know, love and hard work right there. Yeah. yeah, but you don't sell any food in that store. It's just the There's oils and... Yeah, so thematically, uh, we're really staying away from perishable products. Right. But inevitably, uh, there's a few rollover things. Uh, most recently, cookies maybe and stuff yeah, like so that. Yeah, so most recently, yeah. um, so we're we're very hemp Baked. based there. Yeah. Uh, again, another friend of ours, Mateen. They're here on Long Island. Uh, they just launched a company called Seedly, 
and they have uh, hemp, hemp seed-based seed hemp, hemp uh, snack bars. Yeah, um, from the hemp bars, and there's like a granola mix. Hemp hearts? Yeah, hemp hearts. So it's yeah. when you take the seed and you and hull open it. open it, yeah. And that's uh, much more tender. Um, yeah, they're and, soft. And it, they're nice I little snacks. I sprinkle it on top of fish when I'm, when I'm uh, broiling fish instead of breadcrumbs. Hmm. I use hemp hearts now. They're so nutritious. They're, yeah, they're, they're very available uh, yeah. form of protein. Talk about the nutrition in hemp, in hemp seeds. Well, nutrition in hemp... Um, so interestingly enough, we've been working with the, the hemp seed oils. Uh -huh. So we, we bottle and we sell some of the oil. Um, we see the hulled hemp, which tends to be more golden. When you taste those oils, it's kind of nutty. Yeah. And then you have the oils that are cold pressed with the shell on. That tends to be grassier and has chlorophyll. Uh -huh. um, so there's unique types of omega fats, but the protein itself in these hemp seeds uh, is a very available form, yeah. just very much like a pea protein. Um, the These seeds now, let's... To one thing also, because uh, I can't get into too much of the nutrition, mm -hmm. but I wanted to be clear here, it's a good little segue where a lot of people we hear about like, you know, uh, biofuels and stuff from hemp. It yeah. doesn't come from the, the oil pressed from the seeds. It would actually come from the stalks and stems of the plant yeah. itself that are fermented. It's really strong Yeah, stalks. so they ferment that and they make an ethanol like you would from corn. Mm -hmm. um, so we're really not eating the stalks and the stems, but the, the, the hemp itself and cannabis, I kind of call the... The, the forgotten food group. So in other words, uh, as we eat these and it supplements obviously with protein and other nutrients, or we're using these cannabinoids topically or putting them in our body and things are changing. People say, wow, my face looks different or I feel different. Ooh, does it make you younger? So let's, let's compare this. What would happen if we remove protein or carbohydrates or some vitamins from your diet? Uh -huh. It would be the, the, the inverse the opposite, of that. Yeah. So in a way, it's almost like the lost food group through prohibition. And now as it's coming back, we're just beginning to learn. So yes, we have these dietary supplements, cannabinoids, but even as a food product, um, we're, it's really, really starting to re-enter yeah. the, the food stream and we've really yet to see what it's gonna do and how In it's gonna Costco, change In Costco, they sell hemp parts now. Yeah, yeah it's great. Mm. So you are federally licensed. How, what was that process like? To yeah, so technically I am a uh, research partner with New York State uh -huh. under the 2014 Farm Bill. That allows states to have a hemp pilot research program which is authorized by the feds. So uh -huh. I'm a research partner with the state through their program, which makes us compliant with the federal government mm -hmm. there. Do yeah. they come out and check on you and stuff? Oh, yeah, Ag and Markets, the New York State Department of Ag and Markets, uh, they come out. Uh, they've seen us a few times a year now in the spring. Uh, we also have a nursery license. And we sell some transplants, so they come out to make sure the plants are all uh, disease-free, uh, yeah. that we are growing the cultivars that we put on our list. Uh, later in the season, uh, they will come out, and they'll do compliance tests. They'll mm -hmm. take samples to test for... Uh, the THC levels. Uh, I've also had uh, Department of Ag do uh, health and safety inspections on our CBD products. They they visited our lab and our farm stand, checking our labels, et cetera. How, how large is your farm? It's a family fa farm? I'm on family land. How, how long has your uh, family I, I, been out here? My family's been out here, so my grandfather, Joe Pop, from my understanding, purchased his farm uh, just after World War II. He was wow. farming for another farmer in Sagaponic and purchase the, the homestead over on Millstone. Uh, I'm farming on land on Butter Lane that my uncle and my father uh, you know, purchased a few decades ago. And total, including a, a little additional land I lease, um, I'm about 10 acres total. Uh -huh. yeah. and that's what we had in California. Well, we had more, but yeah. that's what the last piece we sold. Yeah. Um, so you've been out here coming on 100 years. We're, we're pretty close to it as the family goes. <coughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Amazing. Do you grow, uh, so you're federally licensed, do you grow any of the female plants that, that the, the buds are a good uh, marijuana or no? You're just so, focusing on hemp. So remember, hemp and marijuana, they're all cannabis. Yeah. And when we're growing for the cannabinoids, it's in the resin of the flowers. Yep. So we're not growing the male plants. Mm -hmm. So as a matter of fact, you can come down, well, by appointment. <laughs> And if you saw pictures of the field or your own self, uh, to the untrained or uneducated eye, you would it think just looks like pot. we're growing pot or yeah. marijuana. Yeah, the same um, leaf. It, it, it's yeah. all the it's same. Beautiful. It's, yeah. it's actually kind of like, again, I compare tomatoes a lot. People are like, well, how do you grow low THC? Do you take it out? I said, no, how do you grow a cherry tomato? Yeah. You buy seeds for a cherry tomato. Right. How do you grow a beefsteak? You buy seeds for a big beefsteak tomato. Yeah. So it's the genetics. And then through testing, you can look at a beefsteak tomato, but how do you know if it's a very sweet one or a very acidic one? 
So you can't just tell by looking, you have to test it. Yeah. You're either going to taste it or do a litmus test, or in the case of cannabis, a THC test. It's just amazing your evolution from mm -hmm. growing mushrooms to mm -hmm. where you are now. Amazing. Wait till those and go legal. <laughs> very interesting. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, magic mushrooms? Yeah. Do you well, have magic mushrooms? The uh, actually coming up, uh, depending on when this shows, uh, I've been, there's a movie called Fantastic Fungi. Uh, uh huh. Touches largely on the work of Paul Stamets and many of uh, his, his peers. The, uh, and it talks about psychedelic mushrooms, but also how fungi, uh, they really, uh, in a way, rule this planet. And uh, I've been invited to give the intro and a Q&A to the movie. And uh, you know, that, that whole psychedelic room, you know, Open Mind Organics is a wellness company. That's mm -hmm. where we started. You know, it was mm -hmm. growing gourmet and medicinal mushrooms. So you know, we can heal the planet and we can help nourish and heal the people along the way. So it's all this evolution, but it still comes full circle. It's all about yeah. wellness here. Yeah. Well, God bless you that you do this work. It's really so interesting. I thought that this painting kind of looked like a woods where mushrooms would be growing. I thought there was and actually the, some growing in there. I think there are. <laughs> yeah. So I wanted to talk about growing mushroom on, in bogs and controlled, and but there's so much to talk about. Do, and you there's, deliver to all the farm stands, all the yeah. all the um, farmers markets, I think we do several the restaurants. Those a week. So. Um, God, we gotta keep eating those mushrooms, and they're delicious. Support your local farmer. What's you know. your favorite mushroom? My my favorite. So there's two: the the blue oyster and the shiitake mushroom. And I enjoy shiitakes. cooking them on the grill. I've never. Um, the done uh, blue the blue oyster. oyster mushrooms are really fantastic. I like leaving them whole in a cluster. We start on a grill with like medium high heat. We start with the gills up, and we put a little uh, olive oil, salt, pepper, garlic powder, and Worcester sauce on them. And you wait till they get a little crisp on the edge. Turn them over. Another splash of Worcester sauce. And uh, they, they almost taste like a piece of chicken. Wow. And then shiitake, we do very similar, but like on skewers. And they have this universal, meaty, not your traditional yeah. funky mushroom flavor. So those two. Well, on that note, that delicious note, mm. we have to say goodbye for now. Okay. And thank you for coming to the Thanks ladies' for room. Me. Yeah. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you learned a lot and you come to Open Minded Organics. And, uh, Give yourself lots of room. Room for love, room for fun, room to grow, and room to glow. And eat those mushrooms. They're full of minerals and all kinds of good things. Yeah. Make you healthy. See you next time. Breathe in. Couldn't stop here. Couldn't stop. No.